Okay, so thank you. Uh, thank you for waiting. Uh, we start today's functional group update from CICD team. Uh, we had to reschedule the last week update. Uh, thanks, Jakob, for switching and doing front end one instead. Uh, maybe let's start with accomplishments. Mm. The last functional group update was between 9.4 and 9.5, and we actually managed to do a lot of for 9.4, uh, much less for 9.5 due to vacations. We basically merged 75 team mergers for 9.4 and 31 for 9.5. But what is more important is the features that we ship. Uh, we ship a lot of very important features like uh, a lot of improvements to CI variables uh, that makes much easier to uh, automate your um, CI CD projects uh, by uh, like specifying group levels, specifying schedule, and a lot of that is uh, EE premium features, cross project variables and environment specific variables. For example, cross project uh, variables will be shipped with 9.5. Also, we merge security improvements like blocking pipeline jobs on protected branches. Uh, we merged some community improvements allowing you to specify configuration paths of, the, of your CI CD uh, file, but also some uh, annoying bugs that uh, a lot of people were uh, facing at gitlab.com. And not only is this bug with cannot connect to CI server error message, uh, but 9.5 is also uh, some research project, uh, not really research project, it's right. Research of the feature that we plan to do beyond 10.0 is proof of concept of job block. Uh, a few words a bit uh, later. And also, Alessio Kaisa joined uh, our team uh, starting yesterday. We see that as a big accomplishment. But as always, there are low lights. Uh, a, few things, a few things that slipped uh, partially because of lack of the hands to, to uh, do proper testing, partially due to communication issues. These are the uh, main things. Auto deploy 0 0.20, it's probably the biggest one that did slip, and it did slip for the second time. We actually miss merge uh, window uh, due to basically uh, inability to make sure that everything that is part of auto deploy is in a good shape and can be shipped with uh, GitLab. Auto deploy is basically connected with a lot of issues that are very important for 10.0 that gonna be uh, released next month. Uh, basically, flattening configuration, enabling auto DevOps, auto CI. Uh, this is what I'm gonna talk about uh, a little later. Uh, migrate CID, CICD statuses for stages. Um, we did a lot of work on the preparing migrant, mi migrant migrations, but for some reason uh, we didn't match that in time. Uh, we started discussing protected runners. Uh, we had some good ideas how to implement that, but it did not happen either. Uh, also, Prometheus for runners, this is something that is in play for some time, um, not yet being done. Uh, if you, if we talk about 10.0, uh, we are always ambitious. Uh, you can, for example, click the CI CD board for CE and EE for 10.0 to just see uh, what uh, we are currently working on. Like the biggest, I think, the most important part of the 10.0, you probably get that from the kickoff is Auto DevOps. And Auto DevOps is like the uh, our direction, not only for 10.0, but also for a few upcoming releases. Mm, but not only Auto DevOps, but there is also a lot of security uh, changes and improvements. Some performance, some customer support requests that are um, we know that are being voted for some time already. Uh, and 10.0 is just a great time to do major changes and duplications. So uh, we just do something that we should do a very long time ago. It's just rename all occurrences of GitLab CI multi-runner to be GitLab runner everywhere. Because this is actually GitLab runner, not GitLab CI multi-runner uh, today. And also duplications of uh, old CI API, something uh, that we are waiting everybody for some time. 
uh, renaming code climate to code quality because this is more appropriate word to be used. But 10.0 is just a, a start of new era for the CICD team and we are looking way beyond 10.0. Uh, I mentioned about, about auto DevOps. If you are very interested about that, uh, just click this link uh, and you will see much more information about auto DevOps. Basically auto DevOps is like an ability for us uh, to offer users very good user experience when using uh, CI CD of GitLab by providing you auto build, auto CI, auto deploy, auto code quality, auto monitoring, we allow you to have this great onboarding experience. Uh, there are some ideas what we can use, uh, for example, for auto CI is the Heroku build packs for testing. Uh, Heroku introduced uh, build packs for a long time ago, but Sometime recently, they introduced test packs. Actually, this is extension to build packs that allows you to test your projects. It's like, it seems like the great idea to be used for uh, these web-based projects that we uh, gonna promote with Auto DevOps, Heroku-based uh, Heroku -based projects uh, that we play very nice with Auto CI and Auto Deploy, and will be like the great solution for Auto DevOps. But, Auto CI is not only about preparing you uh, to improve onboarding, but also like allowing you to have this uh, implied configuration for everyone. Currently, we enable CI/CD for everyone, uh, for every new project that is created, but we don't run anything because most of these projects doesn't have GitLab CI.yaml. With 10.0, uh, we just plan to ship the first iteration of this GitLab CI configuration that will be used always. This is the configuration that will be built in into GitLab, but this will be the configuration that you can basically copy, uh, improve, and use uh, in your project if you really need. But there will be always some configuration used if you have the CICD enabled. The big another move is just GKE integration. We are looking very, very into Kubernetes, uh, allowing you to create a Kubernetes clusters, uh, install runners, uh, improve the uh, CD part, so basically auto DevOps uh, of experience. Uh, we are looking into grouping everything, uh, making it possible to configure everything on group level, like runners, Kubernetes clusters. Uh, we introduced variables recently. This is one of these uh, steps to uh, make it happen. Uh, we also see that there are some um, problems with the future scalability of uh, CI, CD part, like the size of the CI bits uh, table. Uh, we just want to make sure that this table is uh, effectively stored and that we store metadata in the best possible way, that we have ability to archive some metadata and make sure that we can scale uh, today to also work in one year from now when we have, uh, let's say, 10, ti 10 times or uh, 100 times more data than we have today. Mm, configuration improvements, this is something that is also quite requested even by uh, people at GitLab. For example, only except on FilePath is one of these uh, very interesting features. For example, if, we, if you prepare a documentation change, you don't really need to uh, recompile everything, run an uh, RSpec or uh, uh, and run an RSpec or just a uh, Rubocop uh, test because you only want to uh, lint your documentation. So only expect, this is one of the improvements that we are planning and we plan to ship. Uh, UX improvements, this is something that is happening constantly. And there is a lot of people working on that. For example, in last release, we tried to evaluate a feasibility of improving the job log. One of the uh, like reasons to improve the job log is that uh, the job log is usually the place where you go when you see the failure. Uh, and the current experience behind the job log, it's uh, kind of lacking compared to other uh, CI services out there. Uh, for example, ability for people to mm, easily find the relevant information for the failure, ability for people to uh, figure out, a, to, to get a link uh, to a place in job log, uh, which is relevant and you can copy paste it, but also ability to, mm, 
easily go through pipeline graph to, to job log, something that is right now very complicated because you have to go to pipeline graph, click a link, uh, you go to another page, then if you want to see another job in, a, in another stage, you have to go back and click again. This is, this is the experience that is not very nice today. So we try to like do proof of concept. Something is, I think it's not very widely used at GitLab, but like proof of concept where the idea is to move fast, um, don't care about that quality because we have in mind that this is not something that we're gonna use um, for the final product, but at least we can quickly test our assumptions about, the, about that feature. And for example, how uh, performant it is if we, will, uh, if we would, uh, were to implement that feature. Uh, CI on GitLab.com. Uh, last time I mentioned about Bitcoin miners. Uh, this is like kind of uh, ongoing and never ending story. And there is like a lot of uh, efforts from Brian here, uh, our security lead, uh, and also from Tomasz, who are basically, who, and they are basically like, uh, introducing another mechanism for um, blocking Bitcoin miners. They are becoming more and more annoying basically every day and we just now in a phase of figuring out what else we can do, what else we can implement uh, in order to block them. I will not disclose any details about what we are doing. If you are interested, just click the first link. This is the confidential issue uh, because we don't want to show everything what we are doing. Mm, uh, because this is publicly visible. Uh, move artifacts to object storage, this is something that has been uh, implemented, uh, but it now waits for execution, uh, execution on production side, uh, and make sure that it works uh, well. Uh, CI production readiness, uh, there are a number of things uh, being done, a number of things that are, we are continuing to work on, um, the end goal is basically to have uh, the HA solution of our infrastructure. So not be really dependent on single uh, infrastructure provider as we are uh, today. We, this is something that we should be able to achieve once we introduce Prometheus monitoring for runners, something that is uh, actually taking some time uh, today to uh, be done. I think that that's it. For today, I will happily read questions. Uh, group configuration will be huge for many large customers. Yes, we think the same. Uh, this is something that is like being, uh, it's actually the toy job that you have to configure some, some um, configurations uh, on per project basis instead of like allowing you to have uh, be configured on group level, especially that we have today's subgroups. One of these examples you could think of is just the runners. You just have your shared runners for your group, basically, not, not for the GitLab instance. Will that be an EP feature? Mm, some of that probably yes, but not all of that. Uh, today, for example, group viables are CE feature, um, but we just resolve these uh, cases, uh, these, uh, use cases case by case, and then we make the decision whether this is EEP, EES, or uh, CE. Uh, group configuration, uh, we don't yet have plans for doing that. We, we, uh, we did actually discuss that a number of times. Uh, it's not really a scaling issue. Uh, it's more like the uh, ordering of the actions to be done uh, with, as with everything. Okay, I'm not seeing any more questions. If you have uh, any other questions, does just ask in either general questions or CICD channel, and we will be happy to answer. Thank you, uh, see you on the team call.